Hey everyone, welcome back to Spooky Bricks. So in this video, we're heading back to Salem with a mock of an old rustic colonial building. It's based off of a house in Salem's Pioneer Village, which builds itself as America's first living history museum and it acts as a recreation of the way Salem looked in the early 1600s. Pioneer Village was also featured in the beginning of the film Hocus Pocus, where you can see the building in the background. I really like the rough, primitive look to the building, and I thought it would make for an interesting mock with an opportunity for me to try out some different techniques. As usual, the first steps were to create a template for the footprint of the house, with spaces blocked out for the door and the windows. And using the template as a guide, I made the terrain out of various angled and curved plates, which create a nice organic shape that also complements the shape of the house. I also made sort of a proof of concept for the wood paneling on the outside of the house. I wanted to make sure that the tiles would be able to fit together flush on the corners, so I had to figure out where and how they'd all have to be attached to the inner support walls in order to make that all work. The inner support walls are just made of various colored bricks with a few strategically placed lines of snot bricks uh, to attach the paneling. So like most of my houses, the outside is highly finished and detailed, whereas the inside is a messy, colorful nightmare, uh, which is the real spooky part. I covered the inner wall with a layer of plates attached to the snot bricks. And then on top of that, I added the tiles which act as the wood panels. To get that wood coloring, I used mostly tiles in a reddish brown, dark brown, and medium nougat. Although at the bottom of the walls, I used dark tan and light bluish gray tiles to look like some dirty, worn wood. Many of the tiles have either a printed or stickered wood texture to really help get across that rustic wood look. I based these colors and the pattern of colors on the real building as much as I could. As many of you probably know, there have been a lot of batches of reddish brown and dark brown that are very brittle and they break very easily, so I took advantage of that and I used some of my old broken brown tiles to add some rustic texture to the outside. The windows are made from the lattice fence pieces on their sides, with some one by one transcolored plates attached to act as some old primitive glass with some different color tints and variations. This is the same window technique that I use on both my witch house and the Samuel Pickman house mocks. One of the windows is closed off with a wood covering, and that's just to mimic how some of the windows are on the real house. The door is brick built using plates and tiles to get a vertical wood plank sort of texture, and then I used a crowbar for a big metal door handle. Moving up to the roof, I used a combination of tile, grill, and ingot pieces to add some nice texture. I only partially attached them to the underlying layer of plates uh, to help get that rough staggered shingle kind of appearance. This all adds to the overall rustic look of the house. I'm really liking the look of the fully tiled roofs. I think it looks really uh, nice and clean and finished, so I think from now on I'm just going to do all my roofs fully tiled. I angled the roof at a steeper slope than my previous houses, and I think that gives it a more gothic look. 
The chimney is made up of dark red and reddish brown. And I used some textured and rounded bricks to make it look a little older and worn. I really like how the pumpkin patch turned out on my Welcome to Sleepy Hollow mock, so I made a little pumpkin patch out front here too. Next to that we have a barrel full of some random tools. Uh, I hope Lizzie Borden doesn't mind that we borrowed her axe for a little bit. Around the back there's a pile of logs ready for the fireplace. And if you look closely, I used the tree costume from one of the collectible minifigures uh, as one of the larger logs. Continuing around, we have a large barrel of freshly picked apples, and next to that, a wagon wheel, perhaps part of an old, broken-down cart. And last but not least, this is how it looks with the lights on. So this is actually the first part of my Salem Pioneer Village Amok. I'm going to be adding some more elements and some more buildings and uh, specifically some more witchy type elements. Uh, so stay tuned for that, but until then, keep an eye out for more spooky builds.